The English Electric Canberra is a British first-generation jet-powered medium bomber. It was developed by English Electric during the mid to late 1940s in response to a 1944 Air Ministry requirement for a successor to the wartime de Havilland Mosquito fast bomber. Among the performance requirements for the type was the demand for an outstanding high-altitude bombing capability and high speed. These were partly accomplished by making use of newly developed jet propulsion technology. When the Canberra was introduced to service with the Royal Air Force RAF, the type's first operator, in May 1951, it became the service's first jet-powered bomber. Throughout most of the 1950s, the Canberra could fly at a higher altitude than any other aircraft in the world. In 1957, a Canberra established a world altitude record of 70,310 feet (21,430 meters). In February 1951, another Canberra set another world record when it became the first jet aircraft to make a non-stop transatlantic flight. Due to its ability to evade the early jet interceptor aircraft and its significant performance advancement over contemporary piston engine bombers, the Canberra became a popular aircraft on the export market, being procured for service in the air forces of many nations both inside and outside of the Commonwealth of Nations. The type was also license produced in Australia by the government aircraft factories and in the US by Martin as the B-57 Canberra. The latter produced both slightly modified B-57A Canberra, and the significantly updated B-57B. In addition to being a tactical nuclear strike aircraft, the Canberra proved to be highly adaptable, serving in varied roles such as tactical bombing and photographic and electronic reconnaissance. Canberras served in the Suez Crisis, the Vietnam War, the Falklands War, the Indo-Pakistani Wars, and numerous African conflicts. In several wars, each of the opposing sides had Canberras in their air forces. The Canberra had a lengthy service life, serving for more than 50 years with some operators. In June 2006, the RAF retired the last of its Canberras, 57 years after its first flight. Three of the Martin B-57 variant remain in service, performing meteorological work for NASA, as well as providing electronic communication Battlefield Airborne Communications Node or BACN testing for deployment to Afghanistan. <laughs> development Background During the Second World War, a desperate demand for bomber aircraft led to many aircraft being produced by secondary manufacturers via license manufacturing arrangements. The English Electric Company mass produced thousands of piston engine bombers, such as the Hanley Page Hampton and Hanley Page Halifax, in this manner, and the firm thus became a well established British aircraft manufacturer despite having little internal design experience. Sir George Nelson, the chairman of English Electric, decided that the company would seek to remain in the business and produce its own designs. In November 1943, the company was invited to participate in discussions over a prospective bomber which would take advantage of the newly developed jet propulsion technology. In 1944, Westland Aircraft's technical director and chief designer W. E. W. Petter had prepared a design study for a twin engined fighter bomber, the P.1056, based on two fuselage mounted Metrovic F2 quarters. Barrel. Engines. The aircraft used a relatively conventional aerodynamic design, Petter having determined that the necessary performance could be attained without adopting swept wings or a swept tail. The authorities doubted its suitability for operations from unprepared fields and at low altitude but could see its potential as a bomber design. Numerous manufacturers refused to take on the design. Petter left Westland to join the English Electric Company in December 1944, where he was appointed by Nelson to form a design team and encouraged to develop his design. In 1945, English Electric formalized its own in house aircraft design team to pursue this design. The Canberra had its formal origins in a 1944 requirement issued by the Air Ministry for a successor to the de Havilland Mosquito. This requirement, the initial revision being E-345, sought a high-altitude, high-speed bomber which was to be equipped with no defensive armament. 
According to aviation historians Bill Gunston and Peter Gilchrist, Air Ministry officials are alleged to have had difficulty defining what they sought for the proposed type, which led to several revisions of the requirement. Further specification refinements were issued, including B-345 and B-547, issued further details such as a three-man crew and other features such as a visual bombing capability. Several British aircraft manufacturers submitted proposals to meet the requirement, including English Electric. The firm was among those companies to be short-listed to proceed with development studies. By June 1945, the aircraft that was to become the Canberra bore many similarities to the eventual design. Despite the placement of a single, centrally mounted turbojet engine, Petter had held discussions with Rolls-Royce Limited on the topic of the development of a scaled-up derivative of the Nene engine. In late 1945, the design was modified further with a pair of engines being adopted instead, initially to be set in the wing roots and later to be mounted in a mid-wing position. This change was made principally due to center of gravity issues imposed by the position and weight of a heavy bomb load and centrally mounted single engine. The new engine position decreased the aircraft's weight by 13% and improved the aircraft's center of gravity, as well as improved accessibility to the engines and related accessories. Downsides were slightly elevated losses in the longer jet pipes and greater yaw during engine out instances. During the early stages of design, the aircraft had grown from being roughly the same size as the Mosquito to being around double its weight. Although jet-powered, the Canberra design philosophy was very much in the mosquito mold, providing room for a substantial bomb load, fitting two of the most powerful engines available, and wrapping it in the most compact and aerodynamic package possible, an example being a leading edge formed of a single sheet of light alloy wrapped around to 40% of cord, sitting on redox bonded stiffeners through which the ribs were passed, the panels secured with adjustable eye bolts, enabling a highly accurate wing profile to be maintained from the leading edge to main spar without any external joints or fastenings. Also in line with the Mosquito philosophy the Canberra by design dispensed with defensive armament, which had historically proven unequal to fighter aircraft, the resulting performance gain permitting the Canberra to avoid air-to-air -air combat entirely. On 7 January 1946, the Ministry of Supply placed a contract for the development and production of four English Electric A.1 aircraft. It continued to be known as the English Electric A.1 until it was given the name Canberra after the capital of Australia in January 1950 by Sir George Nelson, chairman of English Electric, as Australia had become the aircraft's first export customer. Topic: <laughs> Prototypes and first flights. The Air Ministry specification B-345 had requested the production of four prototypes. On 9 January 1946, English Electric received a contract to produce four prototypes, which received the Society of British Aerospace Companies SBAC, designation a point one. Work commenced on the construction of these prototype aircraft in that same year, which were all built on production jigs. However, progress was slow due to several factors, such as the protracted development of the Avon engine that powered the type. In October 1947, in response to Rolls Royce's difficulties, English Electric elected to have the second prototype modified to use the existing Nene engine in place of the Avon. The implementation of post war military cutbacks also served to slow development. A further external issue that affected development was the failure of the telecommunications research establishment to produce the intended radar bombing system for the aircraft in a timely fashion. This required a redesign in 1947, changing the aircraft's nose to accommodate a glazed tip for visual bombing by a bomb ame, which in turn required the cockpit to be restructured to facilitate the ejection system of the additional. Crew member. In 1948, the design team relocated to Warden Aerodrome, Lancashire, establishing a flight test organization and assembly facilities there. Ultimately, the first of these prototypes, VN 799, did not conduct its maiden flight until 13 May 1949. Piloted by Roland Beaumont, the aircraft is claimed to have handled well with the exception of a rudder overbalance issue encountered. 
This initial flight was flown with the intended Avon engines. The decision to perform the type's first flight with the Avon equipped first prototype or the Nene equipped second prototype, BN 828, was not made until weeks beforehand. On 9 November 1949, the second prototype, BN-828, the first to be equipped with the Nene engine, performed its first flight, the third and fourth followed within the following eight weeks. Flight testing of the prototypes proved to be vice-free and required only a few modifications to be made. The changes included the installation of a glazed nose to accommodate a bomb AME, due to the advanced H2SMK9 bombing radar not being ready for production. The turbojet engines that powered the type were replaced by the more powerful Rolls Royce Avon RA3s, and distinctive teardrop shaped fuel tanks were fitted under the wingtips. Refinements were also quickly made following early flight testing to the rudder and elevator to reduce instances of buffeting, after which it is claimed that the Canberra handled much like a fighter, proving to be atypically maneuverable for a bomber. The project had found considerable support from the government in the late 1940s. In March 1949, in advance of the maiden flight of the first prototype, English Electric received an instruction to proceed for production. By the time the first prototype had flown, the Air Ministry had already placed orders for 132 production aircraft in bomber, reconnaissance, and training variants. On 21 April 1950, the first production standard aircraft, designated as the Canberra B-2, conducted its maiden flight, piloted by Beaumont. Proving to be fairly free of problems, this first flight was almost immediately followed by the mainstream manufacturing of production Canberras. In May 1951, the Canberra entered RAF Squadron service, No. 101 Squadron being the first to receive the type. In a testament to the aircraft's benign handling characteristics, the transition program for the Canberra consisted of only 20 hours in the Gloucester Meteor and three hours in a dual-control Canberra trainer. Topic. Production and licensed manufacturing In July 1949, as English Electric was in the process of setting up production at Samlesbury Aerodrome, a firm order was placed for 132 Canberras. This order consisted of 90 B 547 bomber type aircraft, 34 PR, 31 46 photo reconnaissance aircraft, and 8 T 249 trainer aircraft. On 25 June 1950, what would become known as the Korean War broke out, this led to a surge of demand for the Canberra and the British government stepping in to establish a far greater level of wartime production. This led to a succession of orders for Canberra B-2s, the initial bomber variant, being placed with Avro, Hanley Page, and Short Brothers. For British needs alone, English Electric produced 196 B-2s, Avro and Hanley Page manufactured 75 each, and Short completed 60 aircraft. The B.2 variant of the Canberra exceeded the numbers built of any other version. Other nations, notably Australia and the United States of America, also ordered large quantities of Canberras. In the United States, the U.S. Air Force had identified the need to replace the obsolete B-26 Invader and had determined that, at the time, no home-produced aircraft designs could get close to what the Canberra could already offer. Following a competition against rivals such as the Martin XB-51, it was decided to order a total of 403 Canberras. These aircraft were license built by Martin as the B-57 Canberra. Martin would develop several versions of the aircraft themselves. The first examples were identical to the original English electric aircraft, following which tandem crew seating was introduced, but later B-57 models were considerably modified. Australia had been interested in the Canberra early on, which had led to the aircraft being named after the Australian capital city. Particular interest had at one time been expressed in a potential Rolls-Royce Tay-powered version of the aircraft. The Government Aircraft Factories locally assembled 48 for the Royal Australian Air Force. These aircraft were broadly similar to the British B.2. Changes included the adoption of a modified leading edge, increased fuel capacity and room for three starter cartridges, although in practice all three cartridges would sometimes fire, leading to the triple starter units being loaded singly. 
In addition, Australian-built Canberras used a higher proportion of Australian and US sourced components. A total of 901 Canberras were manufactured by the various UK-based aircraft manufacturers. When combined with overseas license production operations, the overall global production for the Canberras totaled 1,352 aircraft. With a maximum speed of 470 knots 870 km per hour, 540 miles per hour, a standard service ceiling of 48,000 feet 14,600 meters, and the ability to carry a 3.6-ton payload, the Canberra proved to be an instant success on the domestic and export markets. It was built in 27 versions that equipped a total of 35 RAF squadrons, and was exported to more than 15 countries, including Australia, Argentina, Chile, Ecuador, Ethiopia, France, India, New Zealand, Pakistan, Peru, Rhodesia, South Africa, Sweden, Venezuela and West Germany. Photo reconnaissance and specialized roles During the latter part of the Second World War, strategic reconnaissance missions performed by the RAF had been carried out by the de Havilland Mosquito. In 1946, the Air Ministry issued specification PR-3146 seeking a jet-powered replacement for the Mosquito. To meet the requirement, the B-2 design was modified by adding a 14-inch bay forward of the wing behind the cockpit to house seven cameras. It also had an additional fuel tank in the forward part of the bomb bay and only needed a two-man crew. The prototype, designated PR-3, first flew on 19 March 1950, followed by the first of 35 production aircraft on 31 July 1952. In December 1952, the PR-3 entered RAF service, at which point No. 540 Squadron RAF began converting from its Mosquito PR.34 force. The Canberra PR-3 was the first aircraft to be designed for the RAF purely to perform photo reconnaissance missions. The initial Canberra PR-3 model was shortly succeeded by the improved PR-7 variant. The PR-7 featured greater fuel capacity via wing storage, the more powerful RA.7 model of the Avon engine, and Maxarat anti-lock braking system. The Canberra PR-9 was the final photo reconnaissance version. This aircraft was furnished with a new crew compartment, a redesigned inner wing section, and much more powerful RA.24 Avon engine. In later service, bomber models of the Canberra were often converted with cameras and other equipment suited for reconnaissance purposes. To enable crews to convert to flying the Canberra, a trainer version was developed to meet Air Ministry specification T249. On the 12th of June 1951, the prototype, designated T4, conducted its first flight. It was the same basic design as the B-2 apart from the introduction of side-by-side -side seating for the pilot and the instructor and the replacement of the glazed nose with a solid nose. The first production T-4 flew on 20 September 1953 and the variant entered service with No. 231 Operational Conversion Unit RAF in early 1954. In addition to those assigned to the Operational Conversion Unit, all of the B-2-equipped bomber squadrons received at least one T-4 for training purposes. In addition to the RAF, other users adopted the Canberra in the trainer role. The Indian Air Force IAF operated a number of T-4 aircraft for conversion training purposes. The RAAF adopted the Australian-built Canberra T-21 model, which was broadly similar to the T-4. Argentina procured a pair of T-64 trainers during the 1970s. From 1960s onwards, increasing numbers of bomber-oriented Canberras were deemed surplus as newer, faster ground attack aircraft were introduced. This led to such aircraft being rebuilt to serve in various alternative roles, including unpiloted target aircraft, radar trainers, target tugs, radar calibration aircraft, and electronic countermeasures trainers. In addition, some Canberras that had originally been manufactured for the high-altitude bomber mission were re-equipped for low-altitude ground attack missions. Design 
The English Electric Canberra is a bomber aircraft powered by two jet engines, and able to fly at high altitudes. An early prototype operated by Rolls-Royce would regularly fly to 63,000 feet, where the usable speed range coffin corner was only 25 knots, during Avon engine test flights. The overall design has been described as being of a simple nature, somewhat resembling a scaled-up Gloucester Meteor fighter, except for its use of a mid-wing. The Canberra principally differed from its preceding piston-powered wartime bombers by its use of twin Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet engines. The fuselage was circular in cross-section, tapered at both ends and, cockpit aside, entirely without protrusions. The line of the large, low aspect ratio wings was broken only by the tubular engine nacellas. The Canberra had a two-man crew in a fighter-style cabin with a large blown canopy, but delays in the development of the intended automatic radar bomb site resulted in the addition of a bomb amaze position housed within the nose. The pilot and navigator were positioned in a tandem arrangement on Martin Baker ejection seats. The wing is of single spar construction that passes through the aircraft's fuselage. The wingspan and total length of the Canberra are almost identical at just under 65 feet 20 meters. Outboard of the engine nacellas, the wing has a leading edge sweep of 4 degrees and trailing edge sweep of minus 14 degrees. All flight controls are manual, using push rods rather than cables, but are otherwise conventional. These actuate the aircraft's flight control surfaces, including shrouded nosed ailerons, four section conventional split type flaps, and atypical air brakes, which comprise 40 hydraulically raised fingers located on the top and bottom surfaces of the wings. Swept wings were considered, but not adopted, since the expected operational speeds did not warrant them and because they could have introduced new aerodynamic problems into what was otherwise anticipated to be a straightforward replacement for RAF Hawker Typhoon and Westland Whirlwind fighter bombers. The fuselage of the Canberra is of semi-monocoque construction with a pressurized nose compartment. The whole lower section of the fuselage is taken up by the sizable bomb bay with a pair of hydraulically driven doors. The Canberra undercarriage used a simple arrangement, the main landing gear being equipped with a single outboard mounted wheel and the nose gear being a twin wheel arrangement. Due to the use of a new alloy, DTD 683, the undercarriage suffered from stress corrosion cracking. Cracks would appear within only a few years. The hazard posed by an undercarriage collapse during landing led the RAF to institute regular inspections, at first using radiography before moving to more effective and reliable ultrasound technology. The Canberra structure is mainly metal, with only the forward portion of the tail fin made from wood. Thrust was provided by a pair of 6,700 lbf 30 kN axial flow Rolls Royce Avon turbojet engines. They were mounted in the midsection of the wings using tubular trusses and links between the main mounts and the adjacent leading edge of the wing. Each engine drove a 6 kW generator for the aircraft 28 volts DC electrical system, a hydraulic pump for the aircraft hydraulics and a bleed air system for cabin pressurization. Fuel was carried in two internally supported self-sealing fuel tanks and a lace-supported bag in the upper fuselage. The manufacturer specified that Kaufman engine starters should be used for engine starting. An improvised method using compressed air was discouraged by Rolls Royce, but some operators used air starting successfully, the benefit being significant cost savings over the use of cartridges. Various avionics were installed on the Canberra, many with their origins during the Second World War. They included GH navigation, Rebecca Beacon interrogation distance measuring equipment, very high frequency, VHF radio, radio compass, radar altimeter, identification friend or foe, IFF, and orange putter radar warning receiver. Perhaps the most crucial of the mission systems was the H-2S automatic radar bomb site, which was mounted in the nose. Delays in the development of the H-2S intended for the Canberra led to early aircraft being fitted with a T.2 optical site for visual bombing. The optical site was considerably inferior to radar aiming when used from high altitudes. 
the Canberra could deploy many conventional weapons. Typical weapons used were 250 pound, 500 pound, and 1,000 pound bombs. The total bomb load could weigh up to 10,000 pounds, 4,500 kilograms. Two bomb bays are housed within the fuselage, these are normally enclosed by conventional clam shell doors, a rotating door was substituted for these on the Martin-built, B-57 Canberras. Additional stores of up to 2,000 pounds could be carried upon underwing pylons. Operators often developed and installed their own munitions, such as Rhodesia's anti-personnel bomblets, the Alpha Bomb. A varied range of munitions were employed on Canberra fleets around the world. Anti-personnel flechette bombs were tested successfully from the Canberra by Rhodesia, but not used operationally due to international agreements, in part due to its range limitation of just 2,000 miles and its inability to carry the early, bulky nuclear bombs. The Canberra was typically employed in the role of a tactical bomber as opposed to that of a strategic one. In British service, many of the Canberras that were stationed overseas were not modified to deliver nuclear weapons until as late as 1957. Operational history Royal Air Force The Canberra B-2 started to enter service with 101 Squadron in January 1951, with 101 Squadron being fully equipped by May, and a further Squadron, No. 9 Squadron equipping by the end of the year. The production of the Canberra was accelerated as a result of the outbreak of the Korean War. Orders for the aircraft increased and outpaced production capacity, as the aircraft was designated as a super priority. A further five squadrons were able to be equipped with the Canberra by the end of 1952, however, production in the 1951–52 period had only been half of the level planned, due to shortages in skilled manpower, material, and suitable machine tools, the Canberra replaced Mosquitoes, Lincolns and Washingtons as front-line bombers, showing a drastically improved performance, and proving to be effectively immune from interception during air defense exercises until the arrival of the Hawker Hunter. The Canberra also replaced the RAF's Mosquitoes in the reconnaissance role, with the Canberra PR-3 entering service in December 1952. The improved Canberra B-6, with more powerful engines and a greater fuel capacity, started to supplement the B-2s in the UK-based squadrons of Bomber Command from June 1954, when they replaced 101 Squadron's B-2s. This freed up older B-2s to allow Canberra squadrons to form overseas, with bomber and reconnaissance Canberra wings forming in RAF Germany and on Cyprus, with squadrons also being deployed to the Far East. The PR-7 variant of the Canberra, equipped with longer, fuel-filled wings and the Avon 109 engines, executed a 1953 reconnaissance flight over the Soviet rocket launch and development site at Kapustin Yar, although the UK government has never admitted the existence of such a flight. Warned by either radar or agents inside the British government, the Soviets slightly damaged one aircraft. Further reconnaissance flights are alleged to have taken place along, and over, the borders of the Soviet Union in 1954 under the code name Project Robin, using the Canberra B-2WH-726. The USAF also used the Canberra for reconnaissance flights. The aircraft were no longer required after June 1956, following the introduction of the U.S. Lockheed U-2 purpose-built reconnaissance aircraft, Project Robin was then terminated. These RAF Canberra overflights were later featured in the 1994 BBC Timewatch episode, Spies in the Sky, and included interviews with some of the Soviet MiG-15 pilots who had attempted to intercept them. The Canberra was the victorious aircraft flown in the last great air race from London to Christchurch in 1953, piloted by Flight Lieutenant Roland Monty Burden, which touched down at Christchurch 41 minutes ahead of its closest rival after 23 hours and 51 minutes in the air. To this day, the record has never been broken. The Vickers Valiant entered service in 1955, capable of carrying much heavier weapon loads, including the Blue Danube nuclear weapon, over longer ranges than the Canberra. 
This led to the Bomber Command Force of Canberra's equipped for high-level conventional bombing to be gradually phased out. This did not mean the end of the Canberra in front-line service, as it proved suitable for the low-level strike and ground attack role, and versions dedicated to this role were brought into service. The interim B-6, converted from the B-6 by adding provision for a pack of four Hispano 20mm cannon in the rear bomb bay and underwing pylons for bombs and rockets, entered service in 1955, with the definitive, new build B-8, which added a new forward fuselage with a fighter-style canopy for the pilot, entering service in January 1956. An important role for the new low-level force was tactical nuclear strike, using the Low Altitude Bombing System LABS, to allow a nuclear bomb to be delivered from low level while allowing the bomber to escape the blast of the weapon. RAF Germany's force of four squadrons equipped with the B-6 and B-8 could carry U.S.-owned Mark VII nuclear bombs from 1960, which were replaced by B-43 nuclear bombs, also U.S.-owned, from 1965. Three squadrons based on Cyprus and one at Singapore were armed with British owned Red Beard nuclear weapons. Bomber Command retired the last of its Canberras on the 11th of September 1961, but the Germany, Cyprus and Singapore based squadrons continued in the nuclear strike role. The Cyprus based squadrons and one of the RAF Germany squadrons disbanded in 1969, with the Singapore based unit followed in 1970. The three remaining RAF Germany units, which by now had replaced the old Mark VII bombs with newer but still US-owned B-43 nuclear bombs, remained operational until 1972, the last Canberra bombers in RAF service. The RAF continued to operate the Canberra after 1972, employing it for reconnaissance with squadrons equipped with PR-7s and PR-9s being based at RAF Wyden in the UK and RAF Luca in Malta. The PR9s were fitted with special LOROP long-range optical photography cameras, reportedly based on those used by the Lockheed U-2, to allow high altitude of targets deep into Eastern Europe while flying along the inner German border, as well as infrared linescan cameras for low-level night reconnaissance. The RAF used Canberras to search for hidden arms dumps using false color photography during Operation Motorman in July 1972, when the British Army retook Irish Republican held, no go areas in Belfast and Derry. Canberras were used for reconnaissance during the Bosnian War during the 1990s, where they were used to locate mass graves, and during the Kosovo War in 1999. They were also operated from Uganda during the First Congo War, where they were used to search for refugees. Small numbers of specially equipped Canberras were also used for signals intelligence, being operated by 192 Squadron and then 51 Squadron from 1953 to 1976. During the Falklands War, a plan to supply two PR 9s to the Chilean Air Force and secretly operate them with RAF crews over the war zone was abandoned for political reasons. The aircraft got as far as Belize before the operation was cancelled. The PR-9 variant remained in service with No. 39 Pru squadron until July 2006 for strategic reconnaissance and photographic mapping, seeing service in the 2003 invasion of Iraq and, up to June 2006, in Afghanistan. During a ceremony to mark the standing down of 39 Pru squadron at RAF Marham on 28 July 2006, a flypast by a Canberra PR-9 on its last ever sortie was conducted. <laughs> Royal Australian Air Force Shortly after the end of the Second World War, the Australian government initiated a wide-scale reorganisation of the armed forces. As part of this process, the Royal Australian Air Force RAAF developed Plan D as the basis for its post-war structure. Plan D was built around the concept of a numerically smaller but more agile air arm that would employ leading-edge technology. During the late 1940s, the RAAF decided to acquire the Canberra as a replacement for, or complement to, the Avro Lincoln, though fears were raised that the new design was not especially advanced. 
While Australia never introduced nuclear weapons into service, the Canberra ability to carry such a payload was a stated factor in its acquisition. Australia's planned force of 48 Canberras, which held the potential for being nuclear armed, was viewed as far more potent and deterring to potential opponents than the RAAF's entire wartime forces of 254 heavy bombers. The Australian government decided that the RAAF's Canberras would be constructed domestically by the Government Aircraft Factories GAF, as opposed to being manufactured in the UK. On 29 May 1953, the first Australian-built Canberra performed its first flight at Avalon Airport, Victoria. This aircraft was delivered to the RAAF for service trials a few weeks later. In December 1953, the Canberra formally entered Australian service. From July 1950 to July 1960, during the Malayan Emergency, Canberras from Australia, New Zealand and the UK were deployed into Malaysia to fight against communist guerrillas. In 1967, the RAAF deployed eight Canberras to the Vietnam War. The unit, No. 2 Squadron, was later commended for its performance by the United States Air Force. The Canberras were typically operated in the low-level bombing role, taking responsibility for South Vietnam's southernmost military regions, Regions 3 and IV, and allowing USAF bombers to deploy their aircraft to the Ho Chi Minh Trail. While USAF Canberras were equipped with .50 caliber machine guns or 20 mm cannon for strafing, Australian Canberras were deployed to South Vietnam without guns, hence were deployed strictly for low-level bombing missions. Upon their redeployment from Vietnam in 1971, Number no. 2 Squadron had flown approximately 12,000 sorties and dropped 76,389 bombs, and lost two of their aircraft to missiles and ground fire during the course of the war. As early as 1954, Australia recognised that the Canberra was becoming outdated, and evaluated aircraft such as the Avro Vulcan and Hanley Page Victor as potential replacements. The Canberra was incapable of providing adequate coverage of Indonesia from Australian bases, and was evaluated as having a very low chance of survival if it encountered modern fighters like the MiG-17. Political pressure for a Canberra replacement rose to a head in 1962. Australia evaluated the BAC TSR-2, Dassault Mirage IV, McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II and North American A-5 Vigilante, and initially appeared to favour the TSR-2, but chose to procure the General Dynamics F-111C in October 1963. Due in part to delays in the delivery of the F-111Cs, the Canberra continued to be used by Australia for a total of 29 years before its retirement in June 1982. <laughs> Indian Air Force The Canberra was the backbone of the Indian Air Force IAF for bombing raids and photo reconnaissance for many decades. Negotiations to acquire the Canberra as a replacement for the obsolete consolidated B-24 Liberator bombers then being used by India began in 1954. During the extended negotiations between Britain and India, the Soviet Union is alleged to have offered their own jet bomber, the Ilyushin Il-28, at a significantly lower price than that asked for the Canberra. By April 1956, however, the Indian government was in favour of the purchase. In January 1957 India placed a large order for the Canberra, a total of 54 B, I, 58 bombers, 8 PR-57 photo reconnaissance aircraft, and 6 T-4 training aircraft were ordered. Deliveries began in the summer of that same year. A total of 12 more Canberras were ordered in September 1957, as many as 30 more may have also been purchased by 1962. First used in combat by the IAF in 1962, the Canberra was employed during the UN campaign against the breakaway Republic of Katanga in Africa. During the Indo Pakistani wars of the 1960s and 1970s, the Canberra was used by both sides. The most audacious use of the bomber was in the ''Raid on Baden'' during the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965, when the Indian Air Force sent in the Canberra to attack a critical Pakistani radar post in West Pakistan. 
The raid was a complete success, the radars in Baden having been badly damaged by the bombing and put out of commission. A later raid by the IAF was attempted on Peshawar Air Base with the aim of destroying, amongst other targets, several Pakistani B-57 bombers, American-built Canberras. Due to poor visibility, a road outside of the base was bombed, instead of the runway where PAF B-57 bombers were parked. During the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971, Indian Canberras flew a strategically important sortie against the Karachi oil tanks. This had the effect of helping the Indian Navy in their own operations, a series of missile boat attacks against the Pakistani coast. On 21 May 1999, prior to the commencement of the Kargil War, the Indian Air Force Air HQ assigned a Canberra PR-57 aircraft on a photographic mission near the line of control, where it took a severe blow from a FIM-92 Stinger infrared homing missile on the starboard engine. The Canberra successfully returned to base using the other engine. The entire Indian Air Force Canberra fleet was grounded and then retired following the crash of an IAF Canberra in December 2005. After 50 years of service, the Canberra was finally retired by the IAF on of May 2007. Topic Middle East and Africa During the Suez Crisis the RAF employed around 100 Canberras, flying conventional bombing and reconnaissance missions from airfields in Malta and Cyprus. A total of 278 Canberra sorties were flown, dropping 1,439 1,000 pounds (450 kilograms) bombs. However, low-level strikes by smaller fighters were judged to be more effective than the nighttime bombing operations performed by both the Canberra and the Vickers Valiant. In addition, many of the bombs, intended to hit Egyptian airfields, missed their targets, failing to inflict much damage to the Egyptian Air Force or to badly demoralize the enemy. While interception of the Canberra was within the capabilities of Egypt's MiG-15s and MiG-17s, as shown by the interception of Canberras by MiG-15s prior to the Anglo-French invasion, these did not result in any losses. The only Canberra shot down during the Suez Campaign was a PR-7 shot down by a Syrian Gloucester Meteor fighter on 6 November 1956, the last day of the war. The Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland considered the Canberra an important objective to holding greater diplomatic sway in the African continent, and ongoing negotiations over the Baghdad Treaty, and a step towards decolonization. The Suez Crisis caused a delay in the sale, but in August 1957–18 Canberras had been earmarked to be refurbished and transferred from the RAF to the Royal Rhodesian Air Force Both Rhodesia and South Africa used Canberras in their respective bush wars, numerous aircraft were lost in the conflicts. Rhodesian B-2 Canberras together with South African B-12 Canberras carried out attacks on insurgents in Mozambique, usually armed with Alpha cluster bombs, several raids on Zambia, and attacks upon multiple insurgents' bases in Angola. Ethiopian Canberras were used against Eritrea and again against Somalia during the 1970s. Topic. Sweden. The Swedish Air Force purchased two Canberras from the RAF in 1960 and had these modified to T-11s by Balton Paul. The aircraft were secretly modified in Sweden as espionage aircraft for eavesdropping on primarily Soviet, Polish and East German military radio transmissions, although this was not publicly admitted until ten years later. The Canberras were given the designation TP-52, and taken into service as testing aircraft until they were replaced by two TP-85 Caravels in 1971. South America Venezuela On 20 April 1960, the Venezuelan Air Force used its Canberra B-2 and B-8s to bomb the airport at San Cristobal, Teixeira, which had been seized by rebels, led by General José María Castro León. The rebels surrendered shortly afterward. On 26 June 1961, Venezuela's Canberras were used against rebelling army forces in Barcelona, Venezuela. 
Topic: Peru. Peruvian Air Force Canberras flew combat sorties against Ecuadorian positions during the Sanepa War in 1995. On 6 February 1995, a Canberra Mk-68 disappeared over the operations zone. The aircraft had apparently struck a hill in poor weather conditions. Peru retired its Canberras in June 2008. Topic: Argentina. The Argentine Air Force received 10 B-62 bombers and two T-64 trainers at the beginning of the 1970s, replacing the Avro Lincoln in the bomber role. Argentina retired its last Canberras in April 2000. During the Falklands War in 1982, eight of them were deployed to Trelu, 670 miles (1,080 kilometers) from the islands, to avoid congestion on the closer southern airfields. Although within operating range of the British task force, the Canberra was judged to be a limited threat due to its poor maneuverability compared with the British Sea Harriers. From the 1st of May to the 14th of June 1982, Argentine Canberras made 54 sorties, 36 of them bombing missions, of which 22 were at night against ground troops. Two aircraft were lost in combat, the first to a Sea Harriers AIM-9L Sidewinder air-to-air -air missile on 1 May 1982. On 13 June 1982, a second Canberra Mk-62 of Grupo de Bombardio II, B-108 was shot down at 39,000 feet 12, meters when it was struck by a Sea Dart missile fired from HMS Cardiff. The pilot ejected safely but the navigator was killed. It was the last Argentine aircraft to be lost in combat during the Falklands War, with Argentine forces surrendering the next day. Topic: <laughs> Development and Trials Aircraft. A number of Canberras were used by English Electric for development work and trials on new equipment. It was also used by government establishments such as the Royal Aircraft Establishment and the Royal Radar Establishment. The Canberra proved to be a useful platform for such work and was used by a number of British tests and trials establishments. As well as those operated by English Electric, a number of engine manufacturers were also loaned Canberras as engine test beds: Armstrong Siddeley for the Sapphire, Bristol Siddeley for the Olympus, De Havilland Engine Company for the Gyron Junior Turbojet, and Rolls-Royce Limited for the Avon. Ferranti used four different Canberra B2s for avionics development work. One example is WV-787 which was built as a Canberra B-2 in 1952, it was loaned to Armstrong Siddeley and was fitted with Armstrong Siddeley Sapphire engines. It was later transferred to Ferranti for trials for the Blackburn Buccaneer radar and fitted with a B-I-8 type nose and a Buccaneer style radome. It next was moved to the Aeroplane and Armament Experimental Establishment where it was modified to be used as a water spray tanker aircraft for de-icing trials. It would fly in front of the aircraft being tested which would fly into the artificial cloud created by the sprayed water to induce icing. It was retired in 1984 and later preserved at the Newark Air Museum and as a national benchmark airframe on the National Aviation Heritage Register. Topic. Flight records set by Canberras The 21 January 1951 – First non-stop unrefueled transatlantic crossing by a jet. The 26 August 1952 – The prototype B-5 made the first double transatlantic crossing by a jet, with a total time of 10 hours 3 minutes. 4 May 1953 – Canberra B2WD-952, fitted with Rolls-Royce Olympus engines set a world altitude record, flying at 63,668 feet 19,406 meters. 9 October 1953 – Winner of the 1953 London Christchurch Air Race 12,270 miles, 19,750 kilometers, covered in 23 hours 51 minutes. The average speed was 515 miles per hour, 829 kilometers per hour. 
As at 2018, this record still stands. The 29th of August 1955 altitude record: 65,889 feet (20,083 meters). The 28th of August 1957 altitude record: 70,310 feet (21,430 meters). Canberra B2 WK163 with a Napier double Scorpion rocket motor. Topic variants See Martin B-57 Canberra article for the U.S. built variants, English Electric A.1 company designation for the first four aircraft before being named Canberra. Canberra B.1 prototypes for type development work and research at first known by the company designation A.1, 4 built. Canberra B.2 first production version, crew increased to three with addition of Bomb Ame, Avon RA3 engines with 6,500 lbf .91 kilonewtons of thrust, wingtip fuel tanks. 418 built by English Electric 208, Avro 75, Hanley Page 75, and Short Brothers and Harland 60, including eight for export Australia, United States and Venezuela. Canberra PR.3 photo reconnaissance version with a 14-inch section added to the fuselage to house the camera bay, internal fuel was increased and flat panel in the nose was removed. Needed only two crew. The prototype was flown on 19 March 1950 and the variant entered service in 1953. Canberra T.4 first trainer variant with dual controls and a crew of three. Canberra B.5 prototype of second generation Canberra with fuel tanks in the wings and Avon RA7 engines with 7,490 lbf .32 kilonewtons of thrust, one built. Canberra B.6 production version based on B.5 with a 1 foot .3 meters fuselage stretch, 106 built by English Electric 57 and Short Brothers and Harland 49, includes 12 for export. Canberra B.6 RC RC equals radio countermeasures also known as B6 mod or PR16 specialist ELINT version with enlarged nose and blue shadow side looking airborne radar SLAR only four produced extended nose Canberra B I.6 interim interdictor version for the RAF pending delivery of the B I8 Based on the B.6 with a detachable ventral pack housing 4 20mm Hispano MK, V cannon for strafing, also had provision for two wing hard points. Labs low altitude bombing system for delivery of nuclear bombs. 22 produced. Canberra PR.7 photo reconnaissance version based on B.6, had similar equipment to the PR.3 but had the uprated Avon 109 engines of the B.6 and increased internal fuel capacity, 74 built. Canberra B.8 third generation Canberra derived from B.6 as an interdictor. Fitted with a new forward fuselage with teardrop canopy on the port side, and navigator station forward of pilot early marks had the navigator behind the pilot. Provision for a ventral pack similar to the B.I.6 with 420mm Hispano cannon, one external hardpoint under each wing for up to 1,000 pounds of bombs or unguided rockets, LABS low altitude bombing system for delivery of nuclear bombs. Prototype converted from the only B.5 and first flown 23 July 1954, 72 built including 17 for export and 2 converted from B-2s. Canberra PR.9 photo reconnaissance version based on B.I.8 with fuselage stretched to 68 feet .72 meters, wingspan increased by 4 feet .22 meters, and Avon RA-27 Avon engines with 10,030 lbf .6 kilonewtons of thrust. Had the offset canopy of the B.I.8 with a hinged nose to allow fitment of an ejection seat for the navigator. A total of 23 built by Short Brothers and Harland with three transferred to Chile after the Falklands War. Canberra U.10 later designated D.10 remote-controlled target drones converted from B.2, 18 converted. 
Canberra T.119B2s converted to trainers for pilots and navigators of all weather interceptors to operate the airborne intercept radar, crew of four. Canberra B I.12 Canberra B I.8 bombers built for New Zealand and South Africa. Canberra T.13 training version of the T.4 for New Zealand, one built new and one conversion from T.4. Canberra U.14 later designated D.14 remote controlled target drones converted from the B.2 for Royal Navy. 6 converted. Canberra B.15 upgraded B. 6 for use in the far and near east with under wing hard points for 1000 pounds 450 kilograms bombs or rockets. New avionics and fitting of 3 cameras, 39 conversions. Canberra B.16 Similar to B.15 for use in Germany and fitted with Blue Shadow, 19 conversions. Canberra T.17 Electronic warfare training variant used to train surface based radar and missile operators and airborne fighter and airborne early warning crews in handling jamming, including chaff dropping, aircraft, 24 conversions from B.2 with extended nose for sensors. Canberra T17A Updated version of the T.17 with improved navigation aids, a spectrum analyzer in place of the previously fitted in APR-20, and a powerful communications jammer. Canberra TT.18 Target tug conversion of B.2 for the RAF and Royal Navy, 22 conversions. Canberra T.19 T.11 with radar removed as silent target. Canberra B.20 B.2 with additional fuel tanks in the wings, license built in Australia. Canberra T.21 Trainers converted from B.2 and B.20. Canberra T.22 Conversion of the PR.7 for Royal Navy's fleet requirements and aircraft direction unit, used for training buccaneer navigators. Canberra B.52 Refurbished B.2 bombers sold to Ethiopia. Canberra B.56 Refurbished B.6 bombers sold to Peru. Canberra PR.57 Tropicalized PR.7 for India. Canberra B.58 Tropicalized B.8 for India. Canberra B.62 10 refurbished B.2 bombers sold to Argentina. Canberra T.64 2 refurbished T.4 trainers sold to Argentina. Canberra B.66 10 refurbished B.6 bombers sold to India. Canberra PR.67 2 refurbished PR 7s sold to India. Canberra B.I.68 One refurbished B.I.8 bomber sold to Peru. Canberra B.92 One modified B.2 for Argentina, not delivered and embargoed in 1982. Canberra T.94 One modified T.4 for Argentina, not delivered and embargoed in 1982. Short SC.9 one Canberra PR.9, modified by Shorts as SC.9 and fitted with an AI.23 radar, plus IR installation in the nose for red top air-to-air -air missile trials. Continued in use for radar missile development work, until broken up sometime between 1986 and 1998. Short SD.1 one Canberra PR.3, modified by Shorts as SD.1 to be launch vehicle carrying two short SD.2 variants of the Beach AQM 37A Jayhawk high speed target missiles, apparently called Stiletto in the UK, for trials by the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Canberra TP 52 2B.2 aircraft modified with T. 17 noses for ELINT duties with the Royal Swedish Air Force. Topic: Operators. 
Argentine Argentine Air Force 12 purchased 10 refurbished ex-RAF B2s and 2 T4s redesignated B62 and B64 respectively in 1967. Two further aircraft were ordered in 1981 but were not delivered owing to the Falklands War. Australia Royal Australian Air Force 58 Number 1 Squadron RAAF Number 2 Squadron RAAF Number 6 Squadron RAAF Number 1 Operational Conversion Unit RAAF Aircraft Research and Development Unit RAAF Number 1 Long Range Flight RAAF Chile Chilean Air Force 3 Ecuador Ecuadorian Air Force 6 New Build B2 variants delivered in 1955 Ethiopia Ethiopian Air Force 4 France French Air Force 6 Center DSA and Volume Center du TIR et de Bombardement India Indian Air Force 107 New Zealand Royal New Zealand Air Force 13 Number 14 Squadron RNZAF No 75 Squadron RNZAF Peru Peruvian Air Force 60 Rhodesia Royal Rhodesian Air Force 20 South Africa South African Air Force 9 Sweden Swedish Air Force 2 United Kingdom Royal Air Force 782 Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm 69728B NAS RNAS HALFAR Malta Fleet Requirements Unit FRU Fleet Requirements and Aircraft Direction Unit FRADU Royal Aircraft Establishment Dara 2 Ray Bedford and Dara Landler United States United States Air Force 2 only for B57 development Venezuela Venezuelan Air Force 46 West Germany West German Air Force 3 Zimbabwe Air Force of Zimbabwe Topic Survivors Several ex-RAF machines and RB-57s remain flying in the U.S. for research and mapping work. About 10 airworthy Canberras are in private hands today, and are flown at air displays. Argentina At least five Canberras retired from the Argentine Air Force have been preserved in Argentina. BMK.62 B101, Escuela de Suboficiales de la Fuerza Aérea, Province of Córdoba. BMK.62 B102, XRAF WJ713. Retired in 1998, and assigned to Museo Nacional de Malvinas, Oliva, Province of Córdoba. BMK.62 B105, on display at Mar del Plata Airport, Province of Buenos Aires. BMK.62 B109, the last one to complete a mission in the Falklands War, is on display at the Museo Nacional de Aeronáutica de Argentina. BMK.64 B112, is on display at a junction in Parana, Entre Rios. Australia. WJ680 Royal Air Force is on display at the Tamora Aviation Museum in New South Wales. It was acquired in 2001 and the aircraft was fully restored to airworthiness and painted to represent the Canberras flown by No. 2 Squadron RAAF during the Vietnam War. It is Australia's only airworthy Canberra, however, it is currently grounded due to maintenance issues. The South Australian Aviation Museum at Port Adelaide has a non-flying Canberra B2, WK-165 A84-125 is stored at RAAF Base Amberley. A84-201 the Australian-built GAF Canberra is at RAAF Base Amberley in the Base Memorial Garden. A84-203 is on display at Evans Head Memorial Aerodrome. A84-204 is on display at Meandara Anzac Memorial Museum. A84-208 is privately owned and stored at Rupaniup. A84-209 is privately owned at Camden Museum of Aviation. A84-210 is privately owned at Mariba.
A84-219 is on display at Brimaru, Queensland. Parts of A84-220 are on display in the Air Warfare Centre at RAAF Base Edinburgh. The cockpit of A84-222 is preserved at the Australian National Aviation Museum in Moorabbin, Victoria. A84-223 is on display outside No. 2 Squadron HQ at RAAF Base Williamtown. A84-224 is privately owned at Denison, Victoria. A84-225 is on display at Queensland Air Museum, Caloundra Airport. A84-226 is under restoration at the Australian National Aviation Museum. It was previously on display at RAAF Base Wagga. A84-230 is on display at the Aviation Heritage Museum in Bull Creek, Western Australia. A84-232 is privately owned and stored at Avalon Airport. The front fuselage of A84-234 is on display at the RAAF Museum. A84-235 is on display in the museum at RAAF Base Wagga. A84-236 is on display at the RAAF Museum. A84-238 is on display in a park at Willowbank, Queensland, adjacent to A84-248. A84-241 is on display at Woomera Missile Park, Woomera, South Australia. A84-242 is on display at the RAAF Base Amberley Aviation Heritage Centre. A84-245 is on display at the Defence Science and Technology Group, Fisherman's Bend, Victoria. A84-247 was gifted to the Australian War Memorial in 1982 and is stored dismantled, pending restoration. A84-248 is on display in a park at Willowbank, Queensland, adjacent to A84-238. A84-307 is on display at the National Vietnam Veterans Museum, Phillip Island, Victoria. A84-502 is preserved by the Historical Aircraft Restoration Society at Illawarra Regional Airport. Topic Germany Luftwaffe Canberra B.299 plus 34, former RAF WK-137, is on display at the Internationales Luftfahrt Museum, Villingen-Schwenningen, Germany. Luftwaffe Canberra B.299 plus 35, former RAF WK-138, is on display at the Militärhistorisches Museum Flugplatz Berlin Gatto at former RAF Gatto, Berlin, Germany. Luftwaffe Canberra B.299 plus 36, former RAF WK-130 is on display at the Auto and Technik Museum Sinsheim at Sinsheim, Germany RAF Canberra B.I.8XM264 is on display at the Flugasellung Hermeskel at Hermeskel, Germany. India ABI 58 Canberra serial IF907 is on display at the Indian Air Force Museum, Palam in Delhi, India. It is one of several diverted off an RAF contract as part of a 68 aircraft deal for India placed in January 1957. A Canberra, no model number given, might be a PR57 photo reconnaissance aircraft is on display at the HAL Heritage Center and Aerospace Museum in Bangalore. A Canberra B I 58, marked with serial IF 908, is on display at the Sri Shivaji Preparatory Military School SSPMS, in Pune. This is possibly former Royal New Zealand Air Force serial F 1188, acquired by the Indian Air Force in November 1980. One more B I 58 Canberra is preserved at Pune at the Lohagaon Air Station. Marked serial IF-910, it is located on an active military base and is thus not open to the public. A Canberra T.4 marked IQ-999 is on display at Cadet Hill in Diolali, Nashik. Malta 
A Canberra T.4 WT483 was shipped to Malta International Airport in 2010. It is intended to be displayed at the Malta Aviation Museum eventually. Topic: <laughs> New Zealand WT-346 is stored at the Air Force Museum of New Zealand. A-84-240 is on display at the Air Force Museum of New Zealand. Norway Canberra T-17 AWD-955 Gifted to Norsk Luftfartsmuseum and flown to Bodo in 1995. Stored in complete condition in the museum's hangar at Bodo Moss, not open to public. Topic: <laughs> South Africa. A Canberra TMK.4457 of the South African Air Force is displayed at the South African Air Force Museum, Swartkop Air Force Base, Pretoria. A Canberra TMK.4459 of the South African Air Force is plinthed at Air Force Base Waterkloof, Pretoria. Sweden. One Canberra TP-52, modified for ELINT with a T.17 nose is preserved at the Svetinos Museum, Uglarp. The other Swedish Canberra was used for research and is on display at Flygvapen Museum in Linköping. <laughs> United Kingdom AB.2 Canberra GCTTS previously WK163 is located at Doncaster Airport. In August 1957, WK163 broke the world altitude record when it flew to 70,310 feet. As of July 2016, it is currently undergoing restoration to flightworthy condition, at which point it will be the only airworthy Canberra in Europe. A PR.3 Canberra, WF922, is on static display at the Midland Air Museum at Coventry Airport in England. It was retired from the RAF in 1975. WF922 was recently fully restored. A PR.9 Canberra, XH171, is on display at the RAF Museum Cosford in its Cold War collection. A PR.9 Canberra XH131 is on display at the Ulster Aviation Society in their collection at the Mays Long Kesh Lisburn Northern Ireland. AT.4 Canberra WH846 is on static display at the Yorkshire Air Museum near York. AT.4 Canberra WJ874 is on display at the Cornwall Aviation Heritage Centre outside Newquay, Cornwall. A PR.7 Canberra, WH-791, AT.19, WH-904, and a modded B-2, WV-787, Canberra are on static display at Newark Air Museum in Nottinghamshire. A PR.7 Canberra, WE-139, is on display at the RAF Museum Hendon North London. AB.2 Canberra WH725 is on display at the Imperial War Museum Duxford in Cambridgeshire. AT.17 Canberra WH740 is on static display at East Midlands Aeropark. A TT.18 Canberra WJ639 is on static display at the Northeast Aircraft Museum near Sunderland. AB I 8 Canberra WT333 on display at Bruntingthorpe Proving Ground. It is being maintained to a serviceable condition and performs ground runs on open days. AT.4 Canberra WE188 is on display at the Solway Aviation Museum, Carlisle Airport, Cumbria. Topic: United States. 
Two British built Canberras are registered to high altitude mapping missions, Inc. of Spokane, Washington. These are N3OUP, a Canberra B, I, 8, B, 2 sixths, originally operated as WT327, and N4OUP, a Canberra B6, originally operated as XH567. One British built RAF Canberra B2, subsequently converted to TT18 target tug for use by the Fleet Air Arm is displayed outside at Airbase Arizona of the Commemorative Air Force at Falcon Field, Mesa, Arizona. This aircraft, originally WK142 in RAF and RN service, was sold in 1995 to an American buyer and carries N76764 as its U.S. registration. One British-built RAF Canberra B-2, subsequently converted to a TT-18 target tug for use by the Fleet Air Arm is restored by the Valiant Air Command Warbird Museum in Titusville, Florida. This aircraft, WJ-574, was involved in Project Robin flying chase to the overflight Canberra tasked with photographing the Soviet Union's early V-2 rocket tests at Kapustin Yar. Topic. Specifications Canberra B I 6 Data from Combat Aircraft Recognition General Characteristics Crew 3 Length 65 feet 6 in 19.96 meters Wingspan 64 feet 0 in 19.51 meters Height 15 feet 8 in 4.77 meters Wing area 960 square feet 89.19 square meters Empty weight 21650 pounds 9820 kilograms Loaded weight 46000 pounds 20865 kilograms Max takeoff weight 55000 pounds 24948 kilograms Powerplant, 2 times Rolls Royce Avon RA7 MK.109 turbojets, 7,400 lbf, 36 kilonewtons each performance. Maximum speed, Mach 0.88, 580 miles per hour, 933 kilometers per hour, at 40,000 feet, 12,192 meters. Combat radius: 810 miles, 700 nanometers, 1,300 kilometers. Ferry range: 3,380 miles, 2,940 nanometers, 5,440 kilometers. Service ceiling: 48,000 feet, 15,000 meters. Rate of climb: 3,400 feet per minute, 17 meters per second. Wing loading: 48 pounds per square foot, 234 kilograms per square meter. Thrust weight: 0.37 armament. Guns: 4x20 mm Hispano MK V cannon mounted in rear bomb bay, 500 rounds gun or 2x0.30 in 7.62 mm machine gun pods. Rockets: 2x unguided rocket pods with 37 2-inch (51 mm) rockets, or 2x Matra rocket pods with 18 SNEB (68 mm) rockets each. Missiles: A variety of missiles can be carried according to mission requirements, e.g., 2x AS-30L air-to-surface missiles. Bombs: Total of 8,000 pounds (3,628 kilograms) of payload can be mounted inside the internal bomb bay and on two underwing hardpoints, with the ability to carry a variety of bombs. Typically, the internal bomb bay can hold up to 9 by 500 pounds (227 kilograms) bombs, or 6 by 1,000 pounds (454 kilograms) bombs, or 1 by 4,000 pounds (1,814 kilograms) bomb. While the pylons can hold 4 by 500 pounds (227 kilograms) bombs, or 2 by 1,000 pounds (454 kilograms) bombs, nuclear weapons. In addition to conventional ordnance, the Canberra was also type approved for tactical nuclear weapon delivery, including the Mk7, B28, Mod 2, 70 kiloton yield, B57, and B43, as part of a joint program with the United States, plus the Red Beard and We. 
177A, Mod A, 10 kiloton yield nuclear bombs. All nuclear weapons were carried internally. Topic. See also Related development Martin B-57 Canberra Martin RB-57D Canberra Martin, General Dynamics RB-57F Canberra Aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era Arado R-234 Ilyushin Il-28, Hong H-5 Martin XB-51 Sud West Votor Related lists List of aircraft of the Royal Australian Air Force List of aircraft of the Royal Air Force List of bomber aircraft